Okay, Einstein said you want a good actor. Here you go. Ready, scene four. A literal four. mannequin, okay? Ready, hey. scene four. Buddy, take how does this three. look? How's he? Perfect. What do you mean perfect? He's a freaking mannequin. Off. All right, screw this guy. I'm done. Action. Hello everyone and welcome back to your favorite show for all things gaming and really tech related, Gen 2. I'm Garrett Bevins. And I'm Jonas Pila. Now we have some awesome game releases to look at, so let's check them out. This is where the magic happens. But wait, wait, not yet. You start here. There's no shortcut to success. You need a crew. Make them an offer they can't refuse. Welcome to the big show. In Movie House, you ready the camera, unleash your creativity, and create the flip you've always dreamed of. Grow your operation with your razor sharp business sense and usher in a new era for filmmakers worldwide. Movie House, the film studio tycoon, releases on April 5th on PC. There is nothing in this world that cannot be explained with logic and reason. Nothing in this world. There is evil afoot. Strangeness and savagery like I have never seen. Something otherworldly festering in the dark beyond our reach. Experience a nerve-wracking Lovecraftian adventure rebuilt from the ground up with modern graphics and gameplay. Become Sherlock Holmes and find yourself at the heart of the terrifying Cthulhu mythos as you investigate a series of mysterious disappearances in Europe and the US. Sherlock Holmes The Awakened releases on April 11th for all major platforms. Definitely check those out, but now let's look at some other gaming news. Dark and Darker, an upcoming fantasy extraction game, has been removed from Steam following a cease and desist as well as a DMCA claimed by publisher Nexon. It appears to be an escalation of Nexon's ongoing conflict with Iron Mace, the creator of Dark and Darker, over the game's development assets. This comes after a police raid on Iron Mace's offices earlier this month during which they seized resources linked to the gaming project. Overall, the public is very against the company of Nexon. Iron Mace has defended themselves openly with very strong evidence, for example, showing that the assets claimed to be stolen are actually Unreal assets and not Nexon assets. Let's also look into how the Northwest Esports team is doing. In an upset defeat, the Northwest Missouri State Bearcats varsity Valorant team lost their series 0-2 to High Point University on Monday night. Despite putting up a strong fight and having some great plays with comeback looking close in both games, the Bearcats were unable to secure a win and ultimately were outmatched by their opponents. This loss hits the Bearcats hard as it becomes their second loss in a row after a nearly undefeated regular season. This loss in the quarterfinals of the playoffs unfortunately means that they are out for the season. Despite this setback, the varsity team is excited for next season and the challenges that it will bring. In good news, the JV Valorant team finished their season completely undefeated and won their first series of the playoffs 2-0, meaning that they'll be moving on to the semifinals. Starting next Monday at 7, the JV Valorant team will be streamed on the official Twitch channel. In other news, the League of Legends team, coached by Jake Barr, will be starting their climb for the playoffs this Wednesday at 7. The league team ended their season 4-3, and after narrowly making it into the playoffs, are now looking to prove themselves. The league team has utilized new strategies and tactics to outplay their opponents and come out on top. Tune in Wednesday at 7 to see their first round of playoffs. The Varsity Overwatch team finishes their season undefeated and will be starting off their playoffs with a bye week this week. The Overwatch team has dominated their opponents in every series and are looking to continue this trend into the playoffs. With a week of rest and practice, the Overwatch team is making sure they're going to be ready for the semifinals. Make sure to tune in next Thursday at 7pm on twitch.tv at northwest underscore underscore esports. The teams have been working hard all season and are determined to give it their alls in the playoffs. The eSports Update will be back next week with more updates on our team's performances in the playoffs. And that's all we got right now for news. Make sure to subscribe, like, and turn on notifications to not miss our future episodes. Now let's check out the packs this week. Hello everyone and welcome back to Digital Digestion. This week, we're looking to a very unique nerd with Wrench from Watch Dogs 2. 
Wrench is an eccentric and animated character and also a good friend to the main protagonist, Marcus Holloway. Wrench is wicked smart. All of his high-tech hacking abilities are self-taught. He outfits our hero Marcus with drones and weapons via a high-tech 3D printer in their own headquarters. His outgoing personality is great and well represented thanks to his lighted up mask, which to me really reminds me of the band Daft Punk, but that's just kind of what I'm getting. Don't let his tough biker appearance fool you. It's a complete 180 of how he actually is. He's just a big, huge dork. But a good dork, as he can be found throughout the game, quoting old movies and video games and other things from old pop culture. So did Predator. Let's not forget Superman and Batman versus Aliens and Predator. Who won? Can I remember? It doesn't matter. You know what? I give the overall win to Predator. Of course, Wrench is not his real name. In fact, it's Reginald Blankman, and his backstory is sadly tragic. Of course, as I said, his mask is his most defining feature, and many theories speculate on why he even wears it. One theory suggests that he wears it to hide from the CTOS system, the main Big Brother type software in the game that spies on everyone. Others speculate that he uses it to hide from more personal things. Reginald had a tough upbringing, which might be hard to tell thanks to how wild and eccentric he is. He's in fact quite shy, and his mask is the only way that he can show expression and or emotion. The mask acts like a billboard to show how he feels. He's very socially awkward actually when it comes to girls, like most dorks and geeks. Luckily though, his good friend Marcus is there as the best wingman. Can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Do you think my friend's mask is hot or creepy? Both. You staying for another cup of coffee? In the end though, the mask does in fact cover up something, a port wine stain on Wrench's face. A touching moment soon follows of how serious Wrench takes his look and how serious he takes hiding from everything in the world around him. And from there, Marcus proves his loyalty to Wrench, showing how good their friendship really is. You know all that shit that Dushin said? I would never turn on you. He's just trying to tear us apart. I'm not gonna let him do that. We won't. Thanks, Marcus. That does it for this week of Digital Digestion, and that was the lovable geek of Wrench from Watch Dogs 2. If you wanna see any characters in the future, let me know down below who you'd like to see. I'm your host, Garrett Bevan, signing off. Have a good one. You've got a weird relationship with technology. You know that, right? He didn't mean it. Northwest Tower Yearbook has dedicated over a century to documenting life on campus and in the Maryville community. The award-winning organization has numerous pacemaker awards and a spot in the Associated Collegiate Press Hall of Fame. Learn more about Tower at the handles below. Welcome back to 10 out of 10, where we go over some of the best video games that are truly 10 out of 10s. Today, we're going to be going over Fortnite Battle Royale. Fortnite is another one of those games that almost everyone has heard of, and if you play video games, you've probably played it a few times since it came out. Today, Fortnite has somewhat of a negative stigma, but I personally think Fortnite is an amazing game that should be appreciated for what it is. Originally released in September 2017, it was a major hit with 2 million players within the first two weeks. Even though that already seems like a big number, Fortnite continued to grow throughout the years, and today, Fortnite has around 390 million registered accounts worldwide. To put that in perspective, only around 9 million people live in the city of New York. With so many people playing today, it's no question that Fortnite has had a major impact on gaming. 
If you don't already know the basics of Fortnite, Fortnite is a battle royale based shooter where it is your goal to be the last one standing. At the beginning of the game, you and 99 other players skydive out of the sky and land on an always changing and updating map where you have to scavenge for materials, weapons, and other items to help you be the last one standing. You can play Fortnite with friends, or you could just take up the challenge alone. Even though I don't play a lot of Fortnite today, I remember hopping on the game with my friends and just playing for hours and just overall having a great time while playing. If it was from the custom games we used to play, or simply just the battle royale mode, we always had a good time playing and trying to get a win together. Obviously, Fortnite is constantly changing, and it's not the same game it used to be, and it's not the same game it will be in the future. Many people see this as a downside, but I believe this is one of the reasons why this game is so successful. Since its release, Epic Games has pushed Fortnite and the gaming industry to new limits. Fortnite was the game that helped pave the way for things like the Battle Pass, more in-game transactions, and a more successful crossplay that helped unite different players, even from their mobile devices. After Fortnite's success, many games followed in their footsteps. If you've kept up with Fortnite since its release, it's easy to see that Epic Games has spent a lot of time and effort to make this game what it is today. Even after 5 years after this game came out, Epic Games is still releasing new content to help this game feel fresh and keep new players interested. Since its release, Epic Games has constantly added new ways to play to keep the game fun. Every season of Fortnite comes with new cosmetics and new ways to play. Some of the few things I've added in the past were new vehicles, weapons, and more destructive environments. These are just a few examples of the things Epic Games has been adding to Fortnite to make this game more enjoyable than it already is. Because of Fortnite's fun gameplay, massive following, and the company that has built it through the years, it's no question why this game is truly a 10 out of 10. Ready, scene four. Okay, I'm here, let's go. Actors to your marks. I'm there, let's go. Ready, wait, hold Action. on. Action. Wait, I don't have a script. Time, wait, boss man, time out. I don't have a script. Cut. What do you mean cut? Out. Okay, whatever. Jerk. Ready, scene four. Ready, scene four. Check this out, Take check this two. out. You know, hey, I've Actors been, I've been told I've kind of got like a really good Sylvester Stallone, okay? Action. Check this out. Hey, I'm Sylvester Stallone. Hey, hey. And like, you know from that movie, Cut. like, Pred Pre no, like, out. what about Rocky? Ba, 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 out. Ba, 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 ba. Da, 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 okay, da, da. Einstein, you want an actor so bad. Here's a literal mannequin. Ready, so scene make four. Do. Right, Ready, have a scene good one. four. Take three. Action. That's an Oscar right there. Hello, my name is Evan, and welcome to The Price is Free, the show where I show you a free, fun-to-play PC game. This week, we are talking about Apex Legends, a free-to-play battle royale published by EA back in 2019, and has been free-to-play since its release. Using the same battle pass and shop system that a lot of AAA studios use in their free-to-play games, also being built with the same engine used for Titanfall 2 that takes place in the same universe. Apex is one of the faster paced battle royales to come out in recent years, being focused on high mobility and fast encounters with other players, only being able to have two to three players on a team. Team fights are fast encounters usually lasting about 30 seconds. If fights with other teams do take too long, then you're pretty much guaranteed to be ambushed by another squad running towards the sound of gunshots, giving you more motivation to move fast and eliminate other squads faster. Hot dropping or just dropping out of the dropship immediately is my method of starting getting quick into the action even if I do just die about every time I drop in. There are other smaller game modes recently added which are gun run, getting kills with each weapon in the game, control, and we control three points on the map, and team deathmatch which is just an all out brawl for which team can get the most kills. TDM is personally my favorite mostly because it has the lowest amount of camping and the highest amount of continuous action. I think the three new smaller game modes that have been added are more fun and evenly paced compared to the base battle royale. Being able to respawn and run into the action just feels more natural with the fast pace of the game. Being able to respawn gives more incentive to seek out fights and get back into the action quicker, rather than having to loot for a couple minutes only to lose it in a gunfight and have to wait for your next lobby to play again. Titanfall 2 is the predecessor to Apex Legends, and comparing the two games, they have an insane amount of similarities, but also their own game-changing mechanic differences. Starting with the weapons, 
many of the base weapons in Apex were transferred from Titanfall 2, but as later seasons came out, more weapons have come along with them. The main component missing is the actual Titans and the wall running that was in Titanfall 2. Apex still has good mobility, being able to climb walls, and some legends having special movement abilities like Pathfinder with his grapple, but not to the same extent as Titanfall 2. The shop is just about the same in any other major free-to-play game. $20 for a skin, most items being overpriced, and what can be unlocked for free is locked behind a massive grind wall that nobody wants to play. Unlocking legends is also a pain, having to get around 12 and a half thousand credits to unlock one legend, which can take hours of playtime. Thank you for tuning in this week. The price is free. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to check out Apex Legends on consoles and PC for free for a slightly rage inducing but still fun time. I'm your host, Evan. Peace out. Here are the 2022 KNWT Missouri BA Award winners. Amazing things. Third place for documentary film. Channel 8 News. Honorable mention for news show. And Nermageddon. First place for podcasts. Hey Jackson, what's going on this week on Loosely Related? Well, we're chatting with you, oh. Nancy Bond, and we're going to be filling out some weird Mad Libs and acting them out. You should come check it out. Welcome back to Mustard's Monthly Mayhem. This week's review will be over the game Battlefield 2042. Battlefield 2042 is the latest release within the Battlefield community, and it's safe to say that most would have been happy if they never released it. With the horrible initial release, Battlefield 2042 was nearly unplayable with the amount of bugs. Now in 2023, with some new features and updates, let's see if it's worth it now. Most people who have never played a game in this franchise will pick up the game and adapt easily since it's very similar to most first-person shooters. There are several game modes ranging from Conquest or All Out Warfare, Breakthrough, Russian Team Deathmatch, Portal, and Hazard Zone. In my experience so far in reading previous reviews, the attitude towards this game in recent months is on the rise. While that doesn't mean this is a perfect game by any means, it left the door open for me to experience a game that was better than its initial launch. My favorite game mode has to be Conquests. It's an all-out war with points to capture to limit the amount of reinforcements or lives the other team has. These capture points are a big key in this mode's success, as one of the downsides to this game is how big the maps are. These points help find fights, as they are essentially the smaller map inside the big map. The GUI for Battlefield 2042 is definitely different, and I'm sure that I would get used to it with more playing time, but personally, I was not a fan. The health bar was the biggest issue, as it doesn't immediately stand out, which is kind of important to see in these types of games. There are also four classes to choose from in any game mode. These are Assault, Engineer, Support, and Recon. There are a couple items that are specific to each class that make them unique, but you can customize whatever primary you want to carry. I like that there's some uniqueness to the different classes, but it feels like they were trying to make it to where there was a strategy behind picking a certain combination of classes. I didn't notice that, say, picking an assault class and staying near a support class made much of a difference, if any, at all. The gameplay to me felt very sluggish and at times boring, as there was too much space in between each fighting zone. Another thing I didn't like, especially as a new player, was the fact that I had no access to anti-tank weapons such as an RPG or grenade launcher. It felt like any time I saw a tank, no matter what I did, there was no destroying it unless you got in another tank. It got to a point where I was ignoring the tank and trying to fight anyone and everyone around it, even standing on top of the enemy tank to use as a height advantage. I like that there are vehicles as the maps are huge, but I also think it was a mistake to have artillery planes and near indestructible tanks. Another big issue that I have is the bots that are used to fill the game, but not just because they are in the game. It's understandable that to fill a 128 man lobby would require a ridiculous amount of patience and it would almost never happen. The issue I have with the bots is that they snap onto your player and give you almost no reaction time if you happen to come across their view. I know there was a recent update to the game that helped make improvements, but I still think the game is missing some more details. While the game is still on the rise, it's still a pain to play at the moment which leads to me only giving this game a 5 out of 10.
Thank you for tuning in this week, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons and turn on notifications so you can tune in to next week of Gen 2. Hello, this is Gabe Chadwick with RP Geeks, where we look at some of the greatest RPGs of all time and look at what is good about them and what may be below average. Today, we're looking at Bloodborne. Bloodborne is a Victorian cousin of Dark Souls and is a relatively bloodier experience. The entire game takes place in one night, and lucky for you, it's the worst night of all time. I love Bloodborne primarily for its world and thick, evocative atmosphere throughout the game. This gives Bloodborne a unique feeling that many games wish they could provide. The quirk that separates Bloodborne from Dark Souls is the speed of combat. Bloodborne is fast, and while I love Dark Souls combat, Bloodborne combat is easily the better of the two. In Dark Souls, hiding behind your shield is a viable option, but in Bloodborne, that really isn't going to work. Instead, the game gives you a more flashy gun in your sidearm that can be used to shoot and stun your enemy to get a critical attack. Along with changes to your sidearms, you also have a significant decrease in weapons. While this may seem bad at first, it is a huge plus. Because in previous games, weapons had a very similar moveset, but in Bloodborne, weapons are unique and ever-evolving. And along with that, they can transform into completely different weapons on the fly, and allows for freedom to choose how you want to play. Which makes Bloodborne's weapons vastly superior to those in Dark Souls. Though these are major pluses, the one part of Bloodborne that causes me to seethe with rage is the middle of the game. Because in all honesty, it is awful. The game starts out okay with the first few bosses being a great introduction to the world and setting. But after these first few bosses, the game becomes a frustrating and taxing experience. But the ending of the game and the DLC make up for this severe dip in quality which is a testament to how good the ending and DLC are. As previously stated, Bloodborne has downloadable content called The Old Hunters. With most DLC, I would say that it is optional, but for Bloodborne, the DLC is almost mandatory to have a good experience with the game. Because if you don't have DLC, the game overall is an okay experience at best. There is a reason why the DLC is rated higher on IMDB than the actual game. I love Bloodborne as much as the next Souls fan. But I feel like calling the whole game flawless is a disingenuous statement and ignores a huge flaw with the game. Even though Bloodborne isn't a perfect game and might have some of the lowest lows in the Souls-like genre, it also carries some of the highest highs in gaming for me and delivers an overall good experience that I feel like most fans of Souls-likes and RPGs alike can enjoy. Thanks for tuning in to RP Geeks in Gen 2. Make sure to like and subscribe down below and tune in to next week to look at Nier Automata. That's the end of this episode of Gen 2. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to not miss our future episodes. We hope you enjoyed this episode. See you guys in next week's show. Oh my gosh, what now? Oh, Cut! Here we go. Again! Why? Why? We have been here all week trying to get this right. Have you okay, considered that yes. it's maybe your fault? Actually, yeah. No, we point one thing, we have four pointing back at you. I have one thing three, for you to do, and that is to read the script. And pretty you, sure I'm nailing it. Okay, there have been I'm so going many mis-pronunciations. Yeah. All right, have fun. Bye, director. Again!